Seth David here from the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another spectacular screencast. This time we're talking about what happens if you mix personal and business expenses in QuickBooks Online. I'm going to show you a way to deal with this. But first, there's two ways this can go. One way is you use a personal means of payment and pay for something on behalf of the business. And now you want to show that expense on the business's books. <clears throat> That's the good way. And I'll explain what I mean by that. The other way is you actually pay for something out of the business that's for personal uh, purposes, right? And that's the bad one. That's the one that gets you into trouble potentially where it looks like you're commingling funds, right? And where this really can be a problem is, you know, hopefully this never happens. But if, you're, if your business is ever in a lawsuit, one of the first things they're going to do is subpoena the accounting records. And if they see that kind of stuff going on, they do what's called piercing the corporate veil, which means they can go after your personal assets. There's no corporation here because the idea is they're using it to pay their personal expenses and on and on and on. The first way is, is clean. It's fine. It's no different than any employee who might use their personal credit card to buy something and then submit the expenses for reimbursement. So I'm going to show you actually a system here that I've come up with that I've not seen anybody else suggest, um, but that will actually make it really cool for managing that in any case, where, whether it's you as the business owner who needs to get reimbursed or an employee. Here's how you set that up. And the trick is in how you set it up in the chart of accounts. So when you go to the chart of accounts, we're going to create a new account and it's going to be set up as a credit card type account. And we're going to call it expense reports dash enter the name of the person whose expenses you're going to record here that need to get reimbursed. What this does is it gives you a vehicle for tracking those expenses the same way you might any credit card charge while showing it properly as a liability on the balance sheet because the company needs to pay that money to reimburse the person who spent it on the company's behalf. And it gives us some other things that I want to show you that come up with this kind of scenario that are really cool. So again, when you click in to create an expense, the payment account would be expense reports John Wick. Everything else is straightforward. You put in who was paid. Let's say it was Staples. You put in the category of office supplies, whatever the amount was, and put in a detailed memo explaining the payment method that was used and whatever else. Create that audit trail that you might need later on if you need to trace this transaction back to the source document or the source statement somewhere. Of course, the best thing to do is get a copy of that receipt and attach it right here in QuickBooks Online. That way you have the proof of what it, what, um, what it was spent on and how it was paid for and so on <clears throat> right there attached to this transaction. Now I want to show you something else really cool. I think it's really cool, um, but that's why I'm a nerd, that this system will enable you to, uh, to do. <clears throat> so any personal credit card, any credit card, any bank account these days um, allows you to go in and download what's called a CSV file or a comma separated value file. And it's going to look something like this, right? And all you'd have to do is, let's add a column here and call it business expenses, okay? And I'm just going to highlight this whole range and turn this into a table real quick. Props to my friend Matthew Fulton from Parkway Business Solutions for showing me this. I never really bothered with tables until he urged me to. It just makes it a little easier to move things around um, when you have your data organized in a table. First thing I want to do is let's get rid of all these credits. These are payments. Obviously, I'm not submitting those for reimbursement. So let's get rid of those. That should take care of anything in the credit column. Okay, and now all we want to do is go tag which ones are business expenses. So let's sort it by description. And this is what I mean about the table. It just lets, it makes it very easy to do things like this, like sorting, right? We'll get all the Ralph stuff out of there. That's supermarket. But Ralph's fuel, let's say, was a business expense. Same with 76. Adobe stock is, let's say this was in fact a business meal. Chrono Books definitely is. Cloudflare is. GoDaddy business. Payroll is business, right? Uh, my QuickBooks Online subscriptions for me and all my clients. Uh, the car wash, let's say, is auto maintenance for a company car. Um, meals, meals, right? Staples, let's say that one was personal. And uh, let's say that's business related. Whole Foods can go. Um, why am I tagging it then? Let's get rid of those. Okay. Uh, giraffe is definitely 
business, Young Living is not, right? So actually, I didn't really need this. I just needed to sort it and then delete the things that weren't, right? And now I've got it chiseled down pretty quickly, very quickly, in fact, I think you'd have to say, um, down to just what's business related, right? And this way, I'm not commingling because the temptation might be to put this card on the company books and, and treat it as though it were actually a company credit card, Um but that's, again, that gets you back into the realm of what might be considered commingling. Now, the next thing we need to do, and you're going to see why in a minute, is we need to reverse the polarization of these numbers. In other words, we need to turn them from positives into negatives. So I put a negative 1 anywhere in the spreadsheet, copy it, Control-C, highlight the whole range, and I'm going to use my mouse just to make it easy to show you what I'm doing. So right-click, paste special values, but most importantly, multiply. We're basically multiplying every one of those numbers by negative one to turn its sign around. Okay. And now I can get rid of that. And let's fix the formatting because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be importing these into QuickBooks in a second. So we just want a simple format with a negative sign just to make sure it's going to be easy to read. Right. Now what I'd probably want to do is we'll save this as a regular Excel spreadsheet first. Okay, and then I'll save this again back as a CSV. What I'm doing is preserving the original CSV in case I need to get back to it. I clicked the wrong thing. And this is going to be, you know, import file or whatever we want to call it. Right, and if you're going to be doing this regularly, obviously you'd want to put something by way of a date indication in that file name so you know exactly when this was for, right? Now let's go back to QuickBooks Online. I'll go into the banking area. If you've never assigned or set up any bank feeds in QuickBooks Online, you're going to get a dialog that looks like this. So in this case, we're going to choose this option that says Upload Transactions. And I'm going to browse to that CSV file, the import one. See how clear that makes it? And Open and Next. Okay, we're going to select the account. It's going to be Expense Reports John Wick and Next. Okay, we'll stick with, now we're just mapping, right? Here's what's in the Excel file, and, and um, here's where it's going in QuickBooks Online. So the posted date is going to be the date we'll use. The description to the description, of course, is fine. And then we need the, uh, the debit column is the one that had our amounts in it. And this is why we needed to flip the, uh, the sign on the amounts is when we import this, it's going to treat negative numbers as credit card charges. If it saw a positive number, it would view that as a payment made on the credit card. All right, so I'll click Next, and it confirms everything. It's got each of the transactions that I had, uh, you know, uploaded in effect. And when I click Next now, it just confirms that I want to import these. And what this does is it treats it exactly the same as if I had simply downloaded these from the bank. And now all you have to do, like any other bank feed, is add these transactions in. And if you've got rules, the rules will get applied, and this stuff will get coded quickly. So this is a super fast and efficient way of getting reimbursed expenses into the books where you can flag them out of a personal credit card's download and get them imported and get them coded. And then let's add a few of these in. Let's go Magnolia, Car Wash. Okay, and that will save. It's a new vendor. And we'll call this Auto uh, Repairs and Maintenance. All right, and we'll add that in as an expense. Auto for the detail type, save and close. And add, right? Giraffe is going to be software, best financial forecasting software in the world. It's the one that actually got me out of my spreadsheets finally after many, many years. Portos. All right, and we're going to do this as a business meal, save. Meals and entertainment. I hate when I don't capitalize properly. Meals and entertainment. Do that one. Expenses, that's fine. Entertainment meals, perfect. And add that in, right? Into it. Um, that's actually for the uh, software, not for the payroll fees. So let's make a separate vendor for that. All right, that is for the QuickBooks Online software. GoDaddy. All 
All right, we'll leave that as website. Adobe Stock, also website. And of course, normally I'd be creating rules for all this, uh, but this should go fairly quickly. Um, GoDaddy, it should have remembered that. It did. Um, and now it wants to suggest rules. Leave me alone. I told you already, I know. Staples. All right, let's add them as office supplies. All right, that should have been a different detail type, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. So you get the point. I don't think you need to uh, have me sit here doing this. There's my Intuit software one, my Intuit payroll, right? So this goes to payroll expenses, uh, and there should be an account for fees. Let's just add that in real quick. Payroll. Save it, add it. And all I'm going to do now is run a balance sheet so you can kind of see where this gets to. Right? Because now what we have is what looks and works and acts just like a credit card, but it's not. It's an expense report. This is what we owe John Wick. So if we want to write John a check, we simply write a check out of the checking account and we pay off that amount, right? So out of Continental Bank, we, would, we can even type his name because of the way we named it. It finds it, and we can put the amount in which I already forgot it was 1267 something. And this would zero out the expense report and effectively get him paid. What's also nice about this is if somebody needs to review and approve this stuff, easy to do, just run the balance sheet, drill in, and you'll see all the numbers in here. And you can confirm, ask for receipts, do whatever you need to do. When you write the check for the 26, 27, 31 to zero this out, you'll see that clearly in this history in the balance, it'll zero out perfectly. So that's how you deal with it, my friends. If you mix up personal and business expenses in QuickBooks Online, uh, in particular, if you end up charging company expenses with personal means of payment, right? You charge the business expenses on a personal credit card or using a personal debit card, whatever the case, all works the same. If it was on a personal debit card, it's just a, you get the download from the bank, from the bank account instead of the credit card. Now, the other side that I mentioned is we, let's just say it's by accident. We pay for something using the business debit card and it's really for personal means. You could actually run that back through this same account. So let's say um, we did pay for something out of the bank account that was personal in nature, right? Let's say I went to Porto's, but it wasn't a business meal. It was a meal with my wife, right? Which is not business related. I could actually run it back through the expense report. And then I would be very specific in the description, mistakenly use the wrong card. card at the restaurant, blah, 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 right? And you would put it in for, you know, 56, 80, whatever the meal was. And just so you can see what that looks like, I'll save and close. And over here, you can see how it shows up now as a negative, which reduces the amount due. So it has the, it's almost like I reimbursed myself partially for some of this by doing that, right? But when you set up this account, this is the account to use for whichever direction it goes. But obviously my message to you at the end of the day is make it go the first way, if anything. Use a personal credit or debit card to pay for something on behalf of the business and then submit it as an expense to be reimbursed. That can't really be looked at as commingling. It's being handled the exact way you would handle it if an employee came and wanted to submit an expense report. Um, but when you go the other way, when you use the business means to pay for something that's personal in nature, that's where you can get in trouble in terms of commingling funds and somebody trying to say that it's not really a business, you're using it as a personal checkbook. That, my friends, is what to do if you mix up personal and business expenses in QuickBooks Online. As always, I encourage you to post your comments wherever you happen to be watching this. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's always a link in the description that takes you over to Nerd Buzz, which is the new blog. You do need to register an account on my site. It's free. That will give you access to the more detailed write-up, template, downloads, where and when applicable. Um, and the write-up, of course, often includes screenshots that help you follow along even more easily uh, with the video and, of course, everything that I've written about the subject. So as always, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Just go to the contact page on my website if nowhere else and fill out the quick 
lovely little form that we have, and I'll get back to you usually within 24 hours, most of the time a lot faster. And as always, I hope you had fun here, learned something along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.